Dr. Paul Mason, probiotics and fiber are not as effective as a healthy diet itself. I mean, some people say, well, you know, the, you can produce short chain fatty acids from bacterial fermentation of fiber and those short chain fatty acids can be taken up to cells lining the colon and those cells will then convert the uh, short chain fatty acid into a ketone that can be used for energy. And then that colonocyte with more energy can produce mucus and create a protective layer. Colonocyte an endothelial cell of the large intestine and colon. Endothelial cell, one of the simple squamous flattened cells forming the lining of blood and lymph vessels, an inner layer of the endocardium. Why not be in systemic ketosis? And the reason for this is that fiber is only fermented in a very small part of the colon. And where, where it's fermented and these short chain fatty acids are produced, it's, these short chain fatty acids are only exposed to a very limited population of colonocytes lining the bowel. So if you've got pathology anywhere else in the bowel, then it's not going to do a lick of good. But if you're in systemic ketosis and had ketones going around your whole circulation, going around to the whole colon, the whole intestine, you'd be in a much, much better position. And then let's not overlook the fact that, you know, feeding bacteria the wrong things can be very dangerous. And we have no better evidence of this than something called Clostridium difficile, which can cause a condition called pseudomembranous colitis. Clostridium difficile. Bacteria that, when overgrown, can release toxins causing inflammation. Pseudomembranous colitis. Disease caused by overgrowth of Clostridium difficile, perhaps from excess antibiotic use. Now, back in the uh, about 2000, some Japanese scientists figured out how to manufacture on an industrial scale a sugar called trehalose. Now, this was able to lower the freezing point of dairy, which made it really uh, a, a very nice additive um, for things like ice cream. So it didn't take long for this to take off around the world. I think it was about 2002 or something, it got introduced to the food supply in Australia. And whenever this sugar trehalose got introduced, it correlated very nicely with the onset of an epidemic of pseudomembranous colitis. And that's because this bug, this pathogenic bacteria called Clostridium difficile, preferentially feeds off this trehalose where other bacteria, it basically feeding it trehalose allows it to outcompete other bacteria within the gut. It, it does a better job of eating that or fermenting that than other bacteria do. And that's been shown, and this is not weak research, and this is not just me theorising, this was published in Nature. There was a couple of articles in Nature about this. Um, so we have to be careful that we don't want to feed the bad bugs, and that's for sure. Um, but also understand that this whole concept of taking probiotics is just bollocks. Because if I introduce bacteria into my gastrointestinal tract, I've just told you that, you know, if I change the amount of food you eat, you can outcompete or you can cause some bacteria to thrive and basically suppress other bacteria. And that's what happens to probiotics. If you have a ha healthy probiotic, but you don't feed it the right food, they're not going to sustain there. We know that there's studies that show that you can get basically a wholesale change in your microbiome in 24 hours. So basically bacteria die pretty quickly. They outcompete very quickly. And in India, there's a condition called necrolyzing enterocolitis, where we have a, basically an infection inside the intestines. It, it happens in um, very young babies and it, it's very dangerous. And they came up with a term called symbiotic because they thought, well, let's try and put in a, um, a probiotic to outcompete the bad bacteria. What happened? Those bacteria were just washed away. They were outcompeted. So then they gave it with another food source that these bacteria could use. So they fed the probiotic and the food source at the same time. So hence the term syn, as in synergistic, uh, for a synergistic effect, symbiotic. And that had a positive effect. So as far as I'm aware, the only real role for probiotics um, from, a, from a health perspective with regards to traveler's diarrhea is where you need to be taking them in quite large doses and taking them continuously. So basically that they, uh, they sort of uh, suppress any pathogenic bacteria which you might or, or compete with and outcompete any other pathogenic bacteria that you might uh, ingest inadvertently. But if you don't take it repeatedly or in high doses, then that's useless as well. And it's only ever going to be the short-term effect. And we now have very good evidence that taking probiotics causes gastrointestinal upset in a lot of people as well. So they're not, they're not without side effect. Some say you could produce short-chain fatty acids from bacterial fermentation of fiber and that those short-chain fatty acids can be taken up to cells lining the colon, then be converted into ketones as energy for that colonocyte, thus creating more mucus for a protective layer.
colonocyte, an endothelial cell of the large intestine and colon. Endothelial cell, one of the simple squamous flattened cells forming the lining of blood and lymph vessels, an inner layer of the endocardium. Why not simply be in systemic ketosis? Fiber is only fermented in a very small part of the colon. This area only allows fermented fiber access to very limited colonocytes lining the bowel. If the pathology is anywhere else in the bowel, this won't do a lick of good. But if in systemic ketosis, you have ketones going around the whole intestine and colon, and you would be in much better shape. Feeding bacteria wrong things can be very dangerous. Clostridium difficile. Bacteria that, when overgrown, can release toxins causing inflammation. Pseudomembranous colitis. Disease caused by overgrowth of Clostridium difficile, perhaps from excess antibiotic use. Around the year 2000, scientists in Japan discovered ways to mass manufacture trehalose. This allows lowering the freezing point of dairy, making a great sweet additive for ice cream. However, where this has been introduced, it's been correlated with an epidemic of pseudomembranous colitis, which happens when the Clostridium difficile feeds off trehalose. Feeding it trehalose allows it to outcompete other bacteria in the gut. This is from two articles in the journal Nature. We don't want to feed the bad bacteria. This whole notion of taking probiotics is bullocks. Food causes bacteria to thrive or be suppressed. If you have a healthy probiotic but don't feed it the right food, they won't be sustained. Studies show that you can get a wholesale change in your microbiome in just 24 hours. They die pretty quickly. In India, a condition called necrotizing enterocolitis, an infection inside the intestines and very young babies and very dangerous. They tried something called symbiotic, put in a probiotic to outcompete the bad bacteria. When they combined the probiotic with food, then it was effective. Traveler's diarrhea. You take large amounts of probiotics continuously so they outcompete the pathogenic bacteria that you might ingest. But it must be taken repeatedly and in high doses. It's only effective in short term. And probiotics can also cause gastrointestinal upset. Annotated. Summarized, easy to share with loved ones.